What's up with this guy? I woke up and looked over here and you were gr you were grinning at me. I could actually see teeth. You were grinning at me. Jobbird. Joster. Joster. Who am I talking about? Look at that tail. I have an audition today, Jaw. Funny thing about this place that I auditioned last time I was there, I walked in and ran into somebody I knew sitting there waiting to audition. He and I both sat there and waited for about five minutes. Then a friend of ours walked in, and then another friend of ours walked in. <laughs> Four of us that knew each other, and finally the one guy looked at us and said, I think we're being punked. I think we're being pranked. No. Nope. I did eventually book that gig, too. I think it was a BuzzFeed thing. Anyway, he's boring us all. I think what I'm saying right now is boring us all, so let's get the day started. Days with Jordan the Lion. Hey, Jaw. Begins now. Looks like we got a little bit of rain overnight. It's sprinkling right now, so... Well, I got wrapped up in the Richard Simmons craze just like everyone else. And uh, this was the former studio. It's now closed as of, I guess, six months ago. It's now closed and uh, something else will be moving in because Richard Simmons magically disappeared one day. I'm sure a lot of you know the story, and uh, but I'll, I'll kind of give you a, a little bit of a rundown as to what's going on. Three years ago, right around, well, actually this month, Richard had always taught um, personal classes here. I mean, you, I mean, anybody could take them. They were only $12 a class, but he never missed. And then all of a sudden one day in 2014, he was supposed to be here for a class, never showed up, never sent a substitute, and nobody has seen him since. Now what's strange about this is this is a guy who had been in this studio for 40 years. And this is a guy who also made his, his living and made his career off of being outlandish. But also being a friend to the people who um, did his his system deal a meal sweat into the oldies whatever it was he would actually call these people 15 20 of them a day during this time and check in with them some people he had been friends with you know over the phone for 20 years and all of a sudden one day just magically quit showing up now there was all kinds of speculation that maybe he had uh he had undergone a sex change operation, which people, most people didn't really believe because um, he had had a, like he had, he'd been in the hospital recently and when he came out he had a beard and normally people that are going through a, a transition or whatever don't have a beard. So anyway, there's a guy who had taken this class at one point, had become friends with Richard and got really worried because nobody had seen him. Sorry, parking enforcer came by, I had to move my car. So this guy had taken a class here, become friends with Richard, Richard had invited him over to his house, cooked him dinner, and he said there was a weird dynamic between him and his housekeeper, which was that his housekeeper would sit at the head of the table and Richard would cook, prepare the meal, serve the meal, clean up everything, and she would sit at the head of the table. Um, but yeah, after 40 years, he just quit showing up and nobody really seemed to know why. And it was really uncharacteristic of him, like I said. he And they even said, like, that the last couple times he had been here, he was showing up in drag. Like, I mean, full wigs, dresses, makeup, costume, everything. And uh, for somebody to just quit showing up one day. And then for three years, I guess there was somebody still teaching it 
and they decided about six months ago to close it and have one last class and everybody came hoping that Richard would show up and he didn't show up. So nobody's really seen him, nobody really knows what's going on. Um, until this week, there was kind of a breakthrough this week. And uh, I think we'll go over to his house and I'll tell you about the breakthrough. So basically at the last class of this thing, everybody that attended the class just got to take whatever they wanted. They took his records, they took equipment, they took anything that they wanted. They basically like were just given free reign to pilfer the whole studio. Now what has kind of been reported on this guy's podcast, it's called Missing Richard Simmons, is that he's, tried, he's talked to Richard's brother, he's talked to various people, and what they say is Richard just wants his private life now and he just doesn't want to be bothered. But it is pretty strange for a guy who, like they said, you hadn't heard from him in three years and the only thing anybody had heard was he called into like the Today Show like a year ago, and that even raised some suspicion because they were everybody was saying, well, Richard, his thing is showing up. His thing is being on TV. So for him not to make an appearance seemed really strange. And he's also a guy who's known for when there are uh, star tour buses outside his house, he will run out of the house and take pictures with people. Now his house, he's in that three years, he's put up an extra wall. There's no doorbell to contact anyone and he hasn't come out for pictures, nothing. So let's go over there and take a look. Well, there's Richard's house. Now, the update that we've gotten this week is that because of the podcast, because so many people have been reaching out to the police about being worried about his well-being, the police actually came up here and checked on him, and they separated him and his um, housekeeper, put him in different rooms, questioned him, and these are people who are um, trained in asking specific questions, looking for specific answers that might be... Um, an alarm and they said that he was fine they said he was in great shape he was happy he just he just doesn't want to be famous he just doesn't want that life anymore so apparently he's okay which I know we're all glad to hear because he's a funny guy I mean I used to watch him on Letterman and uh, Howard Stern and stuff like that and he was just a real likable person so to know that he's okay is is pretty cool but like I said here's the there is a second gate installed out here out of nowhere, but um, and look, his his mailbox is uh matches the uh, the house. But yeah, he basically he was like this amazing fitness guru. He still his brother was on the podcast that remembering Richard Simmons and said that he has meals with him all the time. Um, was up here for Christmas, so there's nothing to worry about. Richard's just Richard. He's not he's not a happy guy, and he. You know, he may never be, and he's just looking for happiness. He doesn't want to be the court jester to people anymore. So, blessings to him. He kind of took over that whole, almost like the the Liberace, like the appeal that Liberace had to women, where it just women loved him. And uh, good to know that he's okay. Like I said, this, uh, this Lieutenant Becker who had come up and interviewed him, Actually, the guy who did the podcast said that Becker sounded almost smitten with Richard, that he, the normal Richard Simmons charm was there, and uh, you can probably tell this is Richard's place too by that very top uh, window up there, all the colored balls or whatever that is up there. So there we go. I guess he's okay now. And, uh... One of the other things that they said was that when the uh, detectives interviewed him, he said, well, a lot of people claim to be uh, really close friends of yours and haven't heard from you and they're worried. And he opened up his address book and had a ton of addresses and phone numbers and said, these are my real friends. You're free to call any one of them right now. So there we go. And like, uh, like I said, they said one of the weird things or one of the alarming things was that, that he didn't have a doorbell at all. There's no way to contact anybody from outside. That's it. That's Richard's house. And of course, it decided to rain while I was out here doing this vlog. It seems like every time I have to do one where I'm going to be outside, it always decides to rain on me. I was hoping that maybe we'd get lucky. And like I told you how he used to be known for whenever the star tour buses would come up here, he'd come running out and take pictures with people. I was kind of hoping that maybe... 
you know, out of some weird out of the blue moment, maybe he would be uh, getting in the car to leave somewhere, go somewhere, go for a drive, go for a walk or whatever. Now the, the police officer did say that Richard says he comes out and he goes walking in his neighborhood all the time. He goes to the beach, he goes and does stuff. He just doesn't want a public persona anymore. All right, now let's go to my audition. I saw on a uh, on Dave Hughes' uh, new video post that somebody was complaining that I basically include too much of my life. They think it takes too long for me to get to the subject matter. Well, that's not going to change because the reason I do that is because people have said in the past that's what they want. They want to see... They like that I wake up and have jaw there. They like that start to the vlog. And I think that in the end, the success of a vlog is not based on your content as much as it is the vlogger. And if people like you, is that Howard Stern? If people actually like you, then they will watch your, your vlogs because they're into you. And so that's how I run my vlog. I feel like if, uh, people like me, they'll want to go and explore the world with me and get to know me. Um, if you're just tuning in because of my title, you probably won't last long and that's okay. Okay, we're all done. Well, I came out to rain. That's all right. Technically, I'm pretty much done with my day. So let's go home and see the joster. Oh yeah, the rain's back. I knew us having like two weeks off was too good to be true. I actually enjoy it and I got all my stuff done so I'm not gonna complain, but I know a lot of people are tired of it. People whose houses are starting to wash down hills are definitely tired of it. Oh, look at this gentleman. Peeing on trees. Keeping it real. Good job, Jaw. Get the squeaker. <laughs> That's what a walk in the rain will do to you. Came back all jazzed. You're on the jazz again, Jaw. Get the squeaker. Making sure he's still on camera, probably. Well, it's still raining out. Well, it's Dollar Taco night, and like I said last night, Mama Chella's going to be closing here in about two weeks, so I'm going to go over and have some tacos. And I kind of like walking around in the rain, so you guys know that. I love to roam around. I'm really glad I bought these boots yesterday. I decided to wear them today just so I could break them in for when I need them. But because of the rain and everything and they're slip resistant and oil resistant and all that stuff, perfect. All right, guys. Well, we may never see Richard Simmons again. I really don't know. I hope we do. He's an entertaining guy. But I certainly can understand being an entertainer for 40 years if one day you just woke up and just decided, I don't want to do it anymore. I can understand that. You've done it long enough and you just don't want to do it anymore, I guess. So, it was what it was. I'm glad I got to go over, especially when I shoved my camera up against the glass over at um, Slimmons and saw that they're really, really renovating the inside. So it's probably not that long before that sign comes down. So I'm glad I got to see that while it was there. And uh, oddly, I, I've known people that took that $12 class and loved it. They said he was a complete maniac over there. I, I kind of now wish I would have went just for the weird experience. I think I probably would it would have been way too over the top for me, but I think it's one of those things that you would have you would have always had the story, so who knows. Oh, I wanted to uh, thank uh, Edward. I got a new Patreon, Edward, and I wanted to thank... Um, Christina Ports Tillotson, who is um, on YouTube, Let Your Light Shine, and she donated money to my vlog also. So cool of you. I've seen on other people's like comments, it doesn't happen on mine, but I've seen on other 
uh, vloggers that get Patreon and get donations that people are just like condemning him for that. I do not understand why on earth anybody would condemn that. That's what TV is. You People that donate to vloggers, you're producers. You're helping, you're putting your faith in what we do so that we can do more. So when I see people have written on Justin Scard or somebody's uh, YouTube page like get a job or get a real job or something like that, being an entertainer is a job. And what he does is a job. And, you know, to say stuff like that, I, you know, I don't understand that. I feel like that's the mentality of people who feel like they can't produce something that um, other people would want to see. So to, to pick on him for that or pick on anyone else, I've seen it on other people's pages. I think that's ridiculous. And the people that donate to me, thank you very much. I appreciate it. And you guys see what I do with it. I use it towards traveling to... Uh, train rides, putting gas in the car, just going out to Randy Road's grave the other day was um, an hour and a half each way. So that's what it goes towards. Um, you're producers of this show and I appreciate it. So thank you very much. Um, tomorrow's vlog is going to be something else. I have walked by this place a million times and all of a sudden I read this story and it was, you guys are, you're just not going to believe it. It's one of those stories where you I was intrigued by the story, and then as I started peeling away the layers, I found out there were actually four different variations on this story, and I think I have it pinpointed to what actually happened. And this is something else. You're not going to want to miss it. So come see me tomorrow. Days with Jordan the Lion. Your old pal, Jaw, down here on the floor. He's been running back and forth, flopping his ears, and it's raining, and he can't go outside, so he's uh, wanting to get me down there to fight with him. So I'm going to have to go fight Jaw. Have a good night. Please give this a thumbs up, like, subscribe, and uh, have a great night. Your old pal Jordan the Lion saying, Hollywood, California, goodbye.